Hello, hello, hello. Hi guys. Good morning. Welcome back to a new video. Ki hal chal. I hope you guys are doing good. In this, we're going to see a problem. 1352 product of last k numbers. Again, article you will find on the Code with Arian website. And if you have not solved one of his brothers, is product of array except self. Again, it's a good question of products. Now, this problem simply says, and again, on the company tags and stuff, you will find on the article. Cool. Now, it says that design an algorithm that accepts a stream of integers. Again, simply simply imagine that you have to accept incoming numbers and you have to retrieve the product of the last k integers of the stream, which means that you have to implement a class in which a constructor is there, which initializes your empty stream. And then you have to add an incoming element and then get the product of the last k numbers and ultimately return the product of last k numbers. And again, they're mentioning that everything will be fitting inside integer. Now, just for a glance, I will give you an example that you're adding a three in your string. Okay. Then a zero, you will see. Then a two, you will see. Then a five, you will see. Then a four, you will see. So I'm simply adding, so imagine it as a vector. I'm simply adding things in my vector, right? And then getting a product last two. Okay. Uh, so I can just move from the very back, take the last two and get the product. Okay. 20, right? Then getting three, you know, product of three. Just moving backwards, last three characters, last three, you know, numbers, I can get the product, which is 40. Then four, moving back, last four uh, numbers, getting the product, uh, zero. And then adding eight, simply adding a eight in the end of the vector. Now getting the product of two, okay, moving back and last two. So what we realize if we go very naive away, then obviously adding something in a vector in the end is a O of one operation. But taking the product of last k numbers will be moving back on all of the k, taking the O of k operation. So if we go very naively, we will, again, when I say naively, we should brute force, you know, just putting things in the vector and iterating on the last k uh, numbers in the vector, uh, you know, from the vector. I will take O of 1 time for add and O of k time for get product. And also O of n space. Because again, in worst case, I am just simply putting up elements. So uh, O of n space. So this is my complexity. Can I improvise it? Obviously, the question asks you this only that can you implement all of this in O of 1? Okay, let's come on back then that how we can do it. So if we firstly look at it, we have to getting the like if you have to get the product in a specific range. So firstly, it ultimately says, okay, let's say the k is this. You have to get, get the last k, get me the product. Now, as soon as you try to hear this word, okay, uh, range, you know, range product, range sum, you might end up thinking of sliding window kind of things. Again, you can think of this, uh, you know, um, your prefix sums also, which is also correct. Uh, but sliding window could simply, again, these are two things. You can think of sliding window also and range sum also. Because if you don't know, uh, for the range sum technique, if we have to find the range, sum of this range then what i do i maintain a prefix sum i maintain a prefix sum and i take value of this minus prefix sum of this r minus prefix sum of l minus one to get the range sum of l to r right again um if you don't know uh just you know right range you should find things okay like i attach the version in the uh, description below which will involve corresponding prefix sum just to find the range sum so that's one thing another is that you might also think of sliding window because if you don't know that if i have the fixed window of size k i want to find its range sum then let's say i have one two three four two three one let's say three two one then if I know the range sum of this is 4 plus 3, 7 plus 2, 9. As I am moving my window, same window, I'll just incorporate the upcoming element and discard the last element. So I'll add a 3, subtract a 2. So I'll get a 10. So this is how I can also get a range sum. But again, as you simply saw that if I have fixed window of size k, I can use my sliding window approach. But in this case, the window, as you can see, of k is variable it can change and we also saw in the example that it can be two three four anything whatsoever thus i have to use something of a technique which we saw for range sum 
you know finding range sum and for finding range sum we know that uh, we already know we have this prefix sum technique now for we know this prefix sum technique we know that we cannot apply sliding window here we know that you have to apply something of the prefix sum technique now but here it is a prefix product so i have to apply a prefix product technique okay let's try to apply the same which means that i will try to incorporate by saying are let's take the prefix product okay let's take one then here will be one into two which is two again right i am writing like this then again the prefix product i'm just taking the prefix product that's it so i'll just say two into this specific number which is three i'll get a six then i'll take six into two i'll get a 12 then i'll say 12 into one i'll again get a 12 then I'll take 12 into 4, then I'll get 48, and then I'll take 48 into 2, I'll get 96. So this is how I got it. Now, if anyone asks you, Aryan, get me the last 3. So I'll say, if I, okay, last 3 you want to take. I am technically at the last. I'm technically at the very last, right? Let's remove this. Because again, you are adding things in the last, so it's a vector. So that's perfect. Like, that's perfect. Adding something in a vector was already O of 1. If you remember, adding it O of 1. And again, for me, space also is not an issue because I have to keep this, you know, last k numbers. Because obviously, a product can ask for any k possible. My only bottleneck was having this operation and to do that also in O of 1 time. So if I come back, I realize that, okay, now if I am at last character, I and just say, okay, the k was 3. So I should make sure I should go back to this point because again, for me, LR, this is, is this range. So I will go back and 96, I will divide by 12. 96, I will divide by 12. Again, if you know for prefix sum, you were subtracting prefix sum of R minus prefix sum of L minus 1. Here, I will say prefix product of R my, or, or I should say divide by prefix product of L minus 1. Now, because of this, I will simply get my result as 8, right? And that's how you see that the product of this is also 8. So, using the same prefix product technique, I could solve the answer. Now, this would have been very simple considering I did not have a 0. This is the biggest issue because here I am doing a divide. What if this number would have been 0? How this number could be a 0? Let's see if, again, this number can be a 0. If, let's say, any of this, let's say this 3, rather than being a 3, it would have been a 0. So this is a 0, this is a 0, everything becomes 0. In that case, what happens? Oh, when I am trying to divide things. <laughs> so obviously, 0 will upon 0, because again, if it becomes a 0, this will also become a 0, because it's a prefix product. So you are taking the prefix in consideration. So it's a prefix product. So 0 by 0. Oh, anything again, 0 itself is not an issue, but dividing by 0 is actually an issue. So you are going undefined. And that's the biggest bottleneck of this question that how to manage that 0. In this case, also, you have a perfect example where 0 is incorporated. Now, very good thing with 0 is that if I am including 0, then obviously the product will be 0. So I have to just manage this piece of, you know, logic that I know I have to take the prefix product. It's just that how I'm going to manage my zero is a question. Okay, let's start off. I will do the same thing. I will take a prefix product. Let's, let's make the prefix product. So here I have made an array prefix product. Cool. Then I encountered a zero. Now the moment I encounter a zero, oh, I realize that there is no point now. Technically, there is no point. Like if I encountered a zero, there is no point of doing anything. And also if I go back and look at my k, k value starts from one. So it says, okay, you will have something. But the moment I encounter a zero, uh, there is no point of having anything. And if I put a zero here, which means I, again, I have to take a prefix product. So I will have a three, that's for sure. But then I will have to push up. I will have to push a three into, which means last product into and also incorporating zero, which is zero. But uh, if this is zero, the rest, everything will become zero because we are taking a prefix product. So, okay, don't do this. Just simply imagine that, okay, I reset. I take a one. Again, for addition, the reset value is zero. For product, the reset value is one. Okay, let's start further. Now, again, I, I encountered a two. I encountered a two. Simply. Okay, so far you had one. You encountered a two. Multiply one multiplied by two. You became like you got a two. 
okay add a 5 okay so i had a 1 i had 2 earlier again this is earlier so i'm maintaining a prefix product i am not discarding anything because it's not a sliding window i cannot discard anything okay then incorporate 5 then 5 into 2 will be a 10 okay cool then incorporate a 4 okay let's incorporate a 4 1 2 10 then 10 into 4 is 40 so you see that how i'm incorporating the product okay now comes the fun part now comes the fun part you get the product of last two numbers i don't have to do anything i just say that this is my vector which i have built i'm standing right now here i have to take the product of last two which means currently my size is 4 right this 40 is the product of all of these numbers i have to take only the last two so i should divide by size minus k minus 1 because size is 4 minus k will give me a minus 2 and minus 1 will give me okay if i just put the next is 0 1 2 3 so this will help me just saying that jump onto an index 1 which is 2 and again you know very easily you know very easily that now this will not be 0 now any element in this will not be 0 because whenever you are encountering a 0 you are putting the default value as 1 and this will help you to solve your answer because instead of 0 now you are having a 1 in place which will never affect you so here i did that 40 divided by 2 answer is 20 cool perfect okay let's proceed forward uh, now the question asks me that okay you have 1 2 10 4 again find the again find the product of last 3 last 3 simply says that i have 40 i will divide by the current size minus k minus 1 which is size is 4 minus k is 3 minus 1 it comes me 0 so i'll divide by this thing which is 1 so i divide by 1 i will get a 40 again answer is 40 cool take the product of last four numbers again i take the last four numbers which is 1 2 10 and 40 then obviously he takes last four i will just simply ask him bro uh, you are 40 again you have, to, you have to do a divide by something let's see how i will do it then i will simply say that this is 40 and um, if i take that you know size minus k minus 1 it will say size is 4 minus k k also is 4 and minus 1 it gives me a negative value oh if it gives a negative value what does it mean what does it mean it means that i am trying to divide by something which is not there now why it cannot be there it can only be not there because because I got a 0 because of which I placed a 1. Again, I reset the product, you know, the prefix product array and I reset that to 1, which means I lost, which means I lost a number. And I'm losing some numbers. I'm losing some numbers only and only when a 0 came up. So it ultimately indicates that if I'm going beyond, if I'm going beyond, which means that this last thing would have been an impact. Again, would have been, not necessary, would have been an impact of 0 and because of which i lost the previous elements if i am losing the previous elements and now you are asking me to, to get the product which means obviously anything if i go beyond it will incorporate a zero in the original array because of which i will get the product of zero so i realized that if my k is less than my size then i am good but if it is more than or equal to as you can see in this case my k was you know my k was in this case as 4 which is more than equal to my size size is 4 if the k would have been 5 here in this case again my answer would have been 0 so whenever your k is more than equal to your size you know that you are trying to incorporate some you know prefix of l minus 1 which is not existing and it not exist only and only when you started off with a you know you you started off with a 1 fresh and that's how you miss some elements and thus it can simply say that okay my product is 0 right Cool. let's proceed forward uh, if i add a 8 okay i will simply take the existing let's simply erase this portion uh, right so if i take this existing array of 1 2 10 40 i'll simply add a 8 right now coming on back they asked me to put a class 2 okay class 2 i'll simply say that uh, my in uh, my actual array is 1 2 10 40 and 80 last two they are asking so 80 divided by this number so this sorry 320 320 divided by this number which is 10 so 320 by 10 will be 32 and that's my answer cool now because of this 
you already have this array right you already have this array you are just taking the you know prefix product of very back so i'm just taking prefix product dot back divided by dot back back is the last element which is o of one operation and i'm again because it's a vector or an array so i can easily access any specific index value also in o of one time so i divide it by prefix product of size minus k minus one right i'll i'll only do this provided my k is less than size right i'll only do this provided my k is less than size if it is not if it is not then i know the answer will be zero and that's how in O of one time, because I'm maintaining the array, in O of one time, I can get the product as well. I can get the product as well. So because of this, the time for both operations will be O of one now, which means add was already O of one previously also, now also, but product now will be O of one. And now I don't have to deal with division by zero. Space will again be O of n because I will have to have to have to keep my, you know, entire product array. If the K would have been fixed, I could have brought this also down to O of one. But now k is not fixed, so I cannot do that. Cool. Let's see the code again. As you mentioned, I will take a prefix product, right? I will by default initialize that to one, you know, as a constructor because one is a happy case. Like for an array, if I do a range sum, zero is a happy case. You know, it will not impact your answer same way for product. One will not, well, one will never impact your answer. As soon as I am getting any number to add, I will simply add that in my back but making sure adding as a prefix product, which means taking the existing back, multiplying with the current number, getting the new prefix product and adding that to your back. But if a number is zero, make sure to reset the array and put it as one. Now, whenever you are asking for a product, just get the size of the existing array. As I mentioned, if the size is more than my K, I will be easily able to do the division, which means, you know, back divided by prefix product of size minus k minus one if not then answer is always a zero and that's how you can simply solve it cool i hope you guys got it again article you will find on the website codegarden.com and make sure that you practice the problems for arrays because arrays is a very 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 asked concept cool you know go to practice problems again there are multiple things you can go and try for the corresponding sheets as well uh you know the different sheets like we have the uh, DSM master sheet as well which is specifically designed for most frequently asked questions based on lead for premium along with it can teach you all the concepts again if you want to do uh, crash course obviously come to crash course sections again this has course content right now the videos are still being still being uploaded so yeah uh, just wait and watch bye bye take care